Ladies and gentlemen, with 2.2 days left in my monthly fundraiser, I've still got $790 to raise. So I'm going to need to work some miracles here. If you'd like to contribute or donate, I got a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron. I'll leave the links for you in the information box. I got a snail mail if you want to send it to me there. And any help would be appreciated. All right, let's get to the signs in the heavens. We are watching C2020, Comet Fate Swan. That's right, F8 Swan. And it continues to be incredibly impressive. At this point, it is definitely more impressive than Comet Atlas was, which you may remember got blown to bits. And I don't think this one's getting blown to bits. We shall see, though. Now, check this out. Yesterday, it was at a 5.2 magnitude. And today, they have it at 5.1 magnitude. And the latest light curve estimates have it on track for a magnitude 3.5 or 3.75, which would mean you could see it in the sky with your naked eyes. So that's kind of exciting if you didn't have enough exciting things in your life in 2020. And it's still got a ways to go. This has the peak of the light curve coming near the end of May. Comet Swan's closest approach comes in about two weeks on the 13th, which is the day Venus goes retrograde. Uh, so that is when it is closest to Earth. It'll be at a 0.556 astronomical unit. And an astronomical unit is a distance of Earth to the Sun. So it'll be about halfway between Earth and the Sun when it gets to the closest distance to us. But then it continues to get closer to the Earth. I mean, it continues to get closer to the Sun, and the Earth will be moving this way. And so we still have a chance for a pretty dang good show. And comets are like crazy cat ball dragon snorkels. You never know what they're going to do. Comet Swan is here now. Uh, on the second, and as you can see, I mean, you've got Venus, Earth, Mars, all in the matrix of the swan will be passing. And it will reach its closest point to the sun on the 30th of May. So we've definitely got at least a show for two more weeks or possibly a month. That is if Space Force doesn't blow it to bits or the sun doesn't tear it apart with the Rocher limit, heat, gravity, the Trotsky stuff, and all that. Ian Griffin is showing us his first attempt at combining 38 by 30 second images of Comet Swan from this morning. And yeah, baby, she is a beauty. I mean, these are some pretty dang impressive photographs we are getting from all over the world of this crazy comet. It's pretty beautiful. And look at all the pretty colors. It's like grays and blues and indigos. And sprinkled in, we're getting some pretty nice auroras from the upper atmosphere of Earth. Beautiful. I mean, check out these super beautiful auroras over Canada last night. We're getting some pinks, some purples, some indigos, some blues. And sometimes, if I can't name a color, I just call it indigo. There, now you know a little secret of mine. Y'all, y'all, Naked Eye Comet, now visible, has really brightened in the last day. We tried observing it tonight, and it was so bright, it put our instrument into safe mode. Yeah, so, May. It's going to be a month. Here's a picture of Comet Atlas as it is still falling apart. It still has a bit of a nucleus chunk, I guess, when you put them all together and the way you take a photo. But you can see the giant dust and debris field in its tail. Atlas, we hardly knew you. Ian Griffin with the Cosmic Lightsaber Battle, Comet Swan versus Meteor across Papuni Inlet on Otago Peninsula this morning. What a great start to the weekend. Star Wars lightsaber comet meteor astronomy. And yeah, may the fourth be with you. And I gotta say, even though this is supposed to be a unicorns and rainbows episode, because we're just talking about comets, that the energy today, May 1st, was as bad as it's been since uh, the first week of March, which is very stressful for me. And so uh, I'm putting on a warning. I have a feeling May 4th, 
is going to be a pretty bad day. I don't know how. I just have a hunch. And so may the fourth and the force be with you and us always. Alex Lubbers, Comet C2020 Fate Swan continues to rapidly brighten. Now naked eye object in the Shem and faintly visible in dawn skies in the northern hemisphere. The brightness plot has shifted thanks to more reporting and now shows a peak brightness of around 1.8 magnitude. Very nice. By comparison, Mars at its dimmest is around magnitude 1.8, so Comet Swan, assuming it reaches its brightness, will be comparable to Mars in the night sky. Very bright for a comet and the brightest since hale Bop for the northern hemisphere for sure. And so we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but putting it at a range of anywhere between 3.5 and 1.7 means that some people are definitely going to be able to see it. And if it gets to 1.7, then a lot of people will be able to see it. But I want to remind you again, you never know what comets are going to do. And most of the time they underwhelm. But it is 2020, so there is absolutely no reason to let your guard down. I would think Space Force uses lasers, but I don't know. Edwin Quayle, four pictures of Comet C-2020 Fate Swan yesterday morning over Sydney before dawn. First is a single shot, others are a stack. You know how stacks go. And so when you have this many photographs from this many astronomers, and they're this good, yeah, I got a feeling... This may be definitely the comet of May, if not the comet of the century, or the comet of the year. The sun is still my favorite heavenly body, though, if you must know. All right, I will keep you posted because there is a lot of interesting things that are going around. Will Thor News survive for May? Will I survive? Will you survive? Who knows? 2020 is the most cliffhanger years ever. But if you would like to donate... Like I said, I got a mailbox, a PayPal, a Venmo, a Cash App, a Patron. I put up 90 videos in April, and I plan to work just as hard, if not harder, for y'all in May. Because May is going to be one of those months. Super duper thanks to everybody, especially Asteroid Fight Club. I only got $790 left to raise with 2.2 days to go. Thank you, Julie, JL, Kari, Kaz, Rachel, Angela, Glenda. The Super Texas Angel, Ellie Squared, Cool Mike, and Nancy. You guys are amazing. And somehow, if I don't make it, I just please know that I appreciated you guys the whole time. I love you guys. And it is a crazy world. And may all of our days get better and improve as the sun wakes up and goes into solar maximum. And we avoid uh, bad things. All right. God bless everyone. I will talk to you guys in the near future. Peace out.